satellite, launch it, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there's some other things that uh, I've been thinking about and uh, that come from a different direction. Uh, nobody knows the future with certainty. And it seems inevitable, however, that the next decade will be filled with surprises. Un unexpected armed conflicts, the repositioning of countries, and not necessarily nation states, the clash of religions, struggles over the environment, and economic upheavals that may be deeper and more complex than today's. By, but by far, the most profound and powerful changes lie further ahead, at, say, the middle of our century. By that time, three powerful, seemingly unrelated changes are likely to converge. First is a change in the human brain and the nervous system resulting from oncoming advances in the world's neurology labs. One of many examples is recent work done at Brown University where scientists have shown that it's actually possible for paralyzed people to manipulate a computer cursor merely by projecting their brain waves. The generations to come will be certain to uh, surprise at the relative stupidity and naivety of today's best and brightest, present company included. <laughs> Second, during this same half century, we may also face a worldwide rise of religions hostile to science, and as a result, a worldwide scientific deceleration or blackout and a, and a slowdown of change in general. If, however, this war against science can be contained, Humanity's already massive brain bank, stored in intercommunicating computers and networks throughout the world, will multiply at a faster and faster rate. As a result, we can expect an ever deeper understanding of humanity and more generally of other species co-inhabiting planet Earth. But that doesn't complete the picture. A third development of humanity's knowledge base will take us still further. As immense and increasingly valuable as humanity's growing knowledge base is, it primarily focuses on a tiny pinpoint of reality. Tomorrow, we'll also see the great expansion of knowledge about the concept of the cosmos we inhabit. Some of today's leading scientists have been putting forth striking new descriptions and theories about the cosmos. So, quote, quote far out, end quote, uh, are the recent theories that they make science fiction plausible. For example, one blown away as nonsense, once blown away as, as nonsense, the idea that we live in parallel universes is now receiving serious scientific consideration. One version holds that our universe, like a single sheet of paper in a stack, is only one of multiple universes that coexist in a heap beyond any current ability to leap from one to the other. Other scientists, without a wise guy smile, suggest that what we regard as the universe is merely a bubble among an infinity of other universes that arose from some galactic collision, raising the possibility that another such collision may lie ahead. Meanwhile, cosmologists from Princeton, New Jersey, Princeton, Berkeley, University of Chicago, suggest that, quote, cosmic dark energy, end quote, among other factors, is speeding up the expansion of the universe. David Southwood, Director of Science for the European Space Agency, tells us that, quote, despite the fascination with Mars, the two discoveries which have most amazed us, amazed us in the past decade have both been in the solar system and were made at Jupiter and Saturn, not on the planets themselves, but on their moons. Southwood continues, when I was a student in the 1960s, black holes were a theoretical construct. They didn't really exist. We now talk about them as facts of everyday life. Combine these fundamental changes in our over our ever-expanding knowledge base with significant changes in our conception of the cosmos itself, and we glimpse part of the intellectual gulf that will separate us from the occupants of tomorrow and the huge knowledge bank of the world too.